Hello. Um, well, I have prepared another set of assignments for you. And uh, the first one is traditional. I usually offer my students uh, that type of assignments. Well, um, I do believe that uh, you will like it too. Here it is. So the assignment I'm sorry. Uh, so the first exercise includes as many as 10 sentences and you're supposed to identify the mistakes, okay? Uh, probably, uh, probably there is a couple of sentences uh, which are free of any mistakes. And in this case, you just uh, skip them. Well, it's not easy to do as it may seem uh, to be to deal with because um, a sentence may appear to be all right and uh, everything uh, is according to, or better say, in accordance with English grammar rules. However, no. Okay, so make a pause to look through the sentences given to detect the mistakes and amend them, to correct them, okay? By doing this, you will amend the sentences to make them all right. Okay, now we are about to um to i would say explore the sentences given are uh, to identify the mistakes so the first is uh, the first sentence i wish you didn't come yesterday we remember that uh, the i wish construction is uh, very important and it's not easy to deal with because uh, there are some i would say constraints uh, related to the correct use of this of this construction one of them is that we we cannot use any present, not to mention future tense uh, um, after the, uh, the construction, I wish. However, we've got the past simple tense uh, after the I wish construction in this sentence. And it seems to be all right. But also we've got the word yesterday, and it, this is a reference to the past. And whenever we've got the reference to the past, we are supposed to use not the past simple, but the past perfect tense. Well, in this case, we should say, I wish he hadn't come yesterday. This is the correction of the first sentence. Okay. Now let's uh, take a look at the second uh, second sentence. The thing is that I don't like when she sings. Um, everything seems to be all right. Um, so it's a complex sentence. Uh, okay, I don't like when she sings. The present simple tense. Um, we have add s to the main verb uh, sing uh, because the subject is she. We remember that with that rule. Everything seems to be all right. However, um, it's not all right because stylistically, the sentence needs um, to be amended. Well, I would say like this. The thing is that I don't like her singing. Right, this is much better uh, because uh, it's a more natural way to express this idea. Okay, let's take a look at the third one. I think it's not a good idea to purchase house because I don't hate to see spirits around. Okay, I've got the main picture. Um, okay, so I think it's not a good idea. The first mistake made is that uh, the indefinite article A is missing uh, before the uh, collocation good idea. We are talking about one idea and we didn't talk about any idea before. That's, what, that's why we use, we are supposed to use the indefinite article a. So I think it's a good idea or it's not a good idea to purchase. Uh -huh. Another mistake is the incorrect use of the indefinite article a before the word house, because um, we understand what house is being talked about. And because of that reason, we are supposed to use the, the, the definite article there. So I think it's not a good idea to purchase the house the house because people living around, it's okay. Uh, till, uh-huh, tell is incorrect because we use uh, the word, the verb tell when we've got to the addressee, who we address the words to. So tell me, tell him, uh, told them, etc. We don't have any uh, word like of that type in the sentence. That's why the word tell is incorrect, isn't to be used. I would say, say 
I think it's not a good idea to purchase the house because the people living around say it haunts. No. So it haunts. The verb haunt means that uh, there are some uh, ghosts around. And in this case, we are supposed to use the passive voice construction. <clears throat> we should have said it, it uh, is haunted. Okay, let's take a look at the next, I, the continuation. I hate to see spirits. For, uh, first of all, not spirits, ghosts. Yeah, the wrong means okay. But I'm not sure about the verb hate. See, um, people are used to saying, I would like to do something or I wouldn't like to do something. And uh, by saying this numerous times, uh, they get um, accustomed to saying this automatically, uh, mm, forgetting that there is another opposite construction, uh, but uh, the one which is used uh, similarly, it is, would, uh, it is would hate to. And for that reason, I would say, I would hate to see ghosts around me. Okay, let's take a look at the fourth sentence. They said they finished to do their work, their part of work. Uh, okay. They said is okay. Uh, they finished. This is the first mistake. We've got two actions, um, two verbs, both in the past, said and finished. But we understand that these two expressions, uh, these two actions didn't occur simultaneously. Um, Finished occurred earlier than uh, finishing occurred earlier than saying. For that reason, uh, the past perfect tense is uh, to be used in the sentence. It should be like this. They said they had finished. Also, we remember that the verb finish is usually followed by a gerund. And that's why we say they said they had finished doing their part of and work. We understand what work is being talked about. And for that reason, we say they work. So, and the amended version of the sentence is the following. They said they had finished doing their part of work, of the work. Okay, let's take a look at the fifth. I'm in the telephone booth and try to get through you. Ah, okay, hold sick, please. Just sipping some tea. Okay. I mean, the telephone booth. Well, first of all, I don't like the the article there before the collocation telephone booth. Well, I would say I'm in a telephone booth. That's the first thing I don't like about the sentence. And uh, another one is that uh, the conjunction end. I would say I'm in a telephone booth trying yeah, remember that native speakers uh, tend to use the possible one construction very often. And this is the illustrative case. I'm in a telephone booth. Doing what? Trying to get through. Uh, get through you. Uh, no, I would say get through to you. That means that I'm trying to telephone you, but there are some, um, some obstacles to do that. Uh, but I, I, I keep on trying. And in this case, we say get through to somebody. So finally, the amended version of the sentence is like this. I'm in a telephone booth trying to get uh, to get through to you. So the next one. There are some notoriously looking men who seem to wait for somebody. Uh, they maybe want to kill someone. You'd better to come here as soon as... Uh, okay. An, a number of mistakes. Okay. First of all, remember that... Um, the verb look, uh, if it is a synonym for the word appear, when we describe someone's appearance, right? In this case, uh, the verb look requires the use of not adverbs, but adjectives. For that reason, for that reason, notoriously is incorrect. It's a wrong choice. Uh, instead, uh, we should use uh, the uh, corresponding adjective notorious, not notoriously. Uh, let's uh, recollect the verbs look, uh, taste, smell, be, and some others. So um, in this case, it should be like this. Uh, there are some notorious looking men who seem to wait. No, not to wait. Uh, the type of the infinitive uh, 
which is to be used here is not in the, the simple one. It should be progressive, to be waiting, because it's happening right now. For that reason, it should be like this. There are some notorious looking men who seem to be waiting for someone or for somebody. They maybe want to kill someone. Uh, I don't like the verb, uh, the word maybe. Maybe means that uh, there was some probability uh, of the 50 50 uh, chance. Um, um, for that reason, we, we can actually should use uh, molar verbs. In this case, I would say they may want to kill someone. Or in American English, so they are likely to say they might want to kill someone. You'd better come, you'd better to come here. So, okay. Uh, the construction better. Many people believe that uh, better, apostrophe D better uh, means would better. No, absolutely not. Uh, apostrophe D better means uh, or stands for uh, had better. And the construction had better is never followed by two. Uh, it's usually followed by so-called, uh, what is it, the right name of this construction? Uh, bare infinitive, right, without two. You'd better do something. You'd better come here. So you'd better come here as soon as possible. Uh, within the double S construction, we never use um, comparative degree. Uh, so it should be as soon as possible. So the final version of uh, the sixth sentence is uh, the following. There are some notorious looking men who seem to be waiting for someone or somebody. Uh, they may want to kill someone. You'd better come here as soon as possible. So let's take a look at the seventh. What great sportsman my nephew is. Uh, okay, okay. That's an exclamation sentence, uh, which starts from the word what. In this case, we should pay attention to the, uh, to the subject. Uh, the subject in the sentence is the word sportsman. Uh, we talk about only one sportsman. Uh, for that reason, we're supposed to use the article a. Eh. What a great sportsman my nephew is. Mm -hmm. Every day he goes to, oh yeah, again. So go, the verb go is usually followed by a gerund. Go shopping, uh, go hunting, uh, go walking, and in this case, go swimming. Every day he goes swimming. Uh, okay, to cover it. Yeah, we can say like this, okay. However, to cover or covering. Actually, either is okay. So every day he goes swimming uh, to cover, or it's okay to say covering, two kilometers distance. Ah, uh, okay. There are two options. Uh, two kilometers distance as it's written uh, in, uh, in this example is incorrect. I mean to say this one is incorrect, this one. There are two uh, possible uh, corrections, either a two kilometer without s distance, a apostrophe, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the indefinite article a, then two kilometer without s distance, or two kilometers and then apostrophe distance. I wish I can do, uh -huh, okay, I wish I can do. Well, remember, I have already talked about this. We never use any present after the I wish construction. That's why can uh, transforms into could. I wish I could do the same thing too. Okay, the next one. And by the way, uh, sometimes we, uh, put, we put a comma before the word to when it is the last word in the sentence. By the end of the current month, he will build the house. Oh, it's a very complex sentence, I'd say. It's not that easy. First of all, uh, we should uh, pay attention to the, to the collocation by the end. By the end implies the use of a perfect uh, aspect, the perfect aspect. And if we have a uh, future, it should be future perfect tense. By the end of the current month, he will have built the house. However, there is another, uh, even I'd say deeper and more provocative uh, matter about the sentence. 
uh, that person uh, is unlikely uh, to be building the house himself. He has hired a group of uh, builders uh, to have it done, to have it built. And for that reason, uh, besides that, besides the use of the, of the future perfect tense, we are supposed to use the construction to have something done. Remember that uh, we usually say, oh, I have my hair cut, or I have had my hair cut, or I had my car repaired. This is the case in the sentence. Uh, it should be like this, by the end of the current month, he will have, uh, he will have um, uh, his uh, hair being built. Oh, I'm sorry, he will have his hair built. I'm sorry. He will have. No, I wouldn't say he will have had his uh, house built. Oh my God, did I say hair? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, from the beginning, future perfect. Uh, that's for sure. But besides that, uh, the construction uh, to have something done. And the final correction is the following. By the end of the current month, he will have had his uh, house built. Okay. The next one. When I came in, the work was being done uh, for roughly two hours. However, those aren't left much to be desired. Okay. Yeah. Um, but for the words for roughly two hours, everything would be all right. When I came in, the work was being done. However, the result left much to be desired. Yeah, but we've got the, the collocation for roughly two hours. That means that uh, the work started two hours before somebody came in. And for that reason, we're supposed to use the past perfect tense. So when I came in, the work had been done for roughly two hours. However, the result left much to be desired. By the way, I would like to draw attention to the to this collocation. Uh, something uh, leaves much to be desired. So it's an idiomatic expression, and you can use it if you want to say that something isn't uh, as good as you want it to be. Ten. He, along with his friends, has gone to Paris a couple of hours ago. Uh, okay. First of all, uh, there is one uh, snare. It is along with, the collocation along with. Yeah, it may seem to be that uh, we are talking about a group of people, right? Because uh, not only that person didn't uh, uh, go to Paris on his own, uh, he was accompanied by some, some friends of his, right? But the thing is that, that uh, the collocation along with um, means that we should concentrate mainly on the person. And that's why, that's why he, along with his friends, has gone. Seems to be all right. Uh, but we've got another uh, thing which is worth our attention. It is uh, the collocation a couple of hours ago. We know when exactly uh, that group of people left for Paris. And that's why we can't use any present perfect tense. Instead, we use the past simple tense. So in the final correction is he, along with his friends, went to Paris a couple of hours ago. Last one, I was sure that he will succeed. Oh, the first opening uh, verb is was. It's in the past form. That's why we can't use any present or not to say future tense. That's why will um, uh, turns into would. It should be I was sure that he would succeed. Okay, now let's proceed to the second exercise amend the sentences, making them more appropriate. That means that actually, grammatically, in grammatical terms, uh, they are all right, but stylistically, uh-uh, no. So, um, so make a pause and do this exercise on your own, okay? And then compare your results with mine. Okay, and I will sip some tea again. Okay. So, Let's get started then. So 2.1, she came up to me and said that she wanted to leave. Everything seems to be all right. However, again, I told you um, a couple of, not minutes. Yeah, okay, it'll be a couple of minutes ago, uh, ago that native speakers tend to use possible one construction very often. And this is the case. I would say like this, she came up to me saying 
that she wanted to leave. Yeah. Let's take a look at the second one, the book which it is on the, uh -huh. It's obvious that uh, the word it is um, the one which uh, makes, uh, makes the sentence wrong. Without it, everything's fine. The book which is on the table is yours. Okay, number three, one should mind one's own business. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, uh, it's my fault. Actually, I was supposed to have written, instead of once, I was supposed to uh, write uh, his, okay? Let's imagine that it, it, it initially it was written his. And uh, because of the first word, which is one, it is the subject. And that's why any other verbs related to this to the subject should be uh, uh, somehow related to the word one. In this case, it should be one's own uh, business, one apostrophe s. One should mind uh, one's own business. This is the correction. Okay, number four, the most of the people are, phone, uh, are found of the theater. Oh, yeah, first of all, not found, but phoned. Uh, I guess it's my, my misprint. And another uh, incorrect uh, part of the sentence is the incorrect use of the uh, of the definite article there. It should be without it. Most of the uh, most of the people. Uh, why do people uh, tend to make this mistake quite often? It's because they are accustomed to believing that uh, when whenever we we've, uh, we've got a superlative degree word, so we use the, the article there, the best, the fastest, uh, okay, the most difficult, the most challenging, etc. However, the, uh, the word most isn't that easy to deal with. Uh, the thing is that when it doesn't uh, uh, modify an adjective, uh, in this case, um, when it's linked with a noun, we don't use the article there. Most of the people, for example, uh, most of the animals in the zoo, we can't say the most of the animals in the zoo. Most of the animals, yes. The most of the animals, uh-uh, no. I also did like uh, this, uh, uh, this article. You know, it depends. Um, perhaps this sentence uh, is taken from the context and Unless we see the context, uh, it seems to be incorrect to be used. Uh, because if we talk about people on the whole, not about a particular group of people, in this case, we use no article. And it should be like this. Most people are fond of the theater, of the theater. But if, the, if we previously talked about some people, in this case, the use of the article there is a must. Uh, it should be most of their people. OK. Uh, 2.5, it is them. Um, I would say that uh, even native speakers tend to make this mistake. Uh, they, you often uh, may hear them say, oh, it's me, it's you, it's him, it's her. Actually, uh, strictly speaking, in the medical terms, uh, these options are incorrect because uh, the correct uh, ones are like this. It is I who did it. It is she uh, who telephoned you. It is they who are the fastest runners, runners in our group, in our class, etc. However, in spoken English, it's okay to speak like this. So 2.6, I speak English better than him. Well, yeah, it's another widespread Stylistical mistake. Uh, even native speakers tend to speak like this. However, uh, the mistake is that uh, after the after the word "then," I speak English better than he does. Should be. Mm -hmm. Or, for example, she can uh, she can cook better than you can. Okay, two point seven. But this is the boy. 
which is always late. Oh, yeah, okay, which is incorrect, of course. Uh, when we talk about people, we never use which or seldom. Uh, instead, we should use who. This is the boy who is always late. However, I just want to, um, want to give an example when we're supposed to use the word which. For example, uh, there is a group of people sitting in front of you and you're asking them, um, you want to know uh, I, I'm going to say this incorrectly. Who did something? And you say, okay, which of you has done it? In this case, when you want to find out one among others, so you should use the word, uh, the word which. Okay, the next one. This cake is for you and myself. Myself isn't correct. This cake is for you and me. 2.9, when I was a boy, I often went to the cinema. Yes, um, people who are making their first steps in uh, learning English can believe or may believe that the sentence is, incorrect, is correct, absolutely. However, it's not. Uh, when we talk about uh, something which was done in the past regularly, not once, we use another construction and it is used to. When I was a boy, I often used to go to the cinema. It's a much better um, option to choose. And 2.10, the cake was divided between the four children. The four children is okay because we understand which children we're talking about. But I don't like the use of the conjunction between. Uh, or proposition between. Okay, never mind. Between is incorrect. I would say the cake was divided among the four children. I just want to draw attention to the fact that we use the word between. When we talk uh, about two items, two people, for example, or two items, uh, but when we talk about more than two, we use, uh, uh, we're supposed to use uh, the word among. Okay, thank you. So I hope that uh, you have found it interesting to do. And now let's proceed to the listening. Yes, listening. Again, you're gonna do something really challenging. You're gonna listen to um, a short lecture as kind of uh, listening part four in the IELTS. Well, and uh, after each paragraph, you're supposed to choose uh, the right or the correct um, short sentence in writing the main idea expressed in the paragraph. Okay, so take a look at uh, the three ones given for question one, for paragraph one. The reasons explaining the single father social phenomenon emergence. Explanation why the number of single tens, uh, sorry, single fathers it should be single fathers uh, single fathers again explanation of why the number of single fathers tends to be rising nowadays it's not uncommon that judges decide in favor of the father in court okay these are three possible uh, either of the three uh, is uh, likely to be the right uh, summarizing sentence for the first paragraph. So uh, get ready, please. Uh, I'm going to read uh, the first paragraph of the lecture. Okay. When I say uh, three, so I will start. One, two, three. In the United States, the number of single fathers doubled between 1983 and 1993. A single father has the complete responsibility for his child or children. He may be the only parent because the mother has died. Or, which is more often, he may be given the full responsibility for the children by the judge in court. This may happen when there is a, dis, uh, when there is a divorce or when unmarried parents disagree. 
In the past, judges almost always decided the children should stay with their mother. Now, however, it is more common for judges to decide in favor of the father. That is, a judge may decide that the mother isn't, isn't able to take proper care of the children. This is the main reason why there has been such a large increase in the number of single fathers. So we have some time to choose the right option. Let's proceed to the second one. So um, for question two, again, we've got three, um, uh, three uh, options to choose from. The first one, changes in advertising approaches. B, single fathers appear less masculine because they have to do the shopping on their own. C, women pick up some names more often than men. Uh, by the way, more often than men do. <laughs> it's better. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> get ready, please. As more women go to work outside the home, men are doing more of the housework and the shopping. This fact has led advertising companies to change some of their methods. Traditionally, television adver advertisements for household products were aimed at women, and they featured women. Now, some companies that sell these products feature men in their advertisements. For example, one supermarket company has produced an advertisement showing a father shopping with his little boy. However, this is no ordinary father. The actor in this advertisement is known for his roles in films of violence. The company wants to make sure that shopping fathers don't feel any less manly in their new role. So we've got 15 seconds to choose the right uh, option. Now let's proceed to paragraph three. Regardless of one's gender, I'm sorry, regardless of one's gender, one's responsible for giving birth to a defective child. B, comparison which is more responsible for giving birth to a defective child. And C, investigation of what exactly results in the quality of one's genes. So when I say R3, I will start reading the third paragraph. One, two, three. Men who drink a lot of alcohol may have a higher chance of having children with physical or mental problems. Doctors have long been aware that women alcoholics may give birth to defective babies. However, scientists have recently discovered that alcoholism in men may be responsible for birth defects too. Large quantities of alcohol may affect the quality of the father's genes. This genetic change may cause a child to be born defective in some way. Scientists aren't sure how this happens, but the scientists of the study seem to leave little doubt that it can happen. So um, this is uh, the third paragraph. OK. Uh, perhaps I should read. <clears throat> read out the third <clears throat> paragraph again, I'm sorry. For <clears throat> so paragraph three again. Men who drink a lot of alcohol may have a higher chance of having children with physical or mental problems. Doctors have long been aware that women alcoholics may give birth to defective babies. However, scientists have recently discovered that alcoholism in men may be responsible for birth uh, defects too. Large quantities of alcohol may affect the quality of the father's genes. This genetic change may cause a child to be born defective in some way. 
Scientists aren't sure how this happens, but the statistics of the study seem to leave little doubt that it can happen. Okay, thank you. So again, you can leave your answers in, com in your comments below the video clip, okay? And I will check them. Now, uh, oh, actually there was a continuation. So uh, the last part of uh, today's um, uh, lesson is speaking, um, developing uh, your speaking skills is very important because uh, you pay money for your uh, English language instructions not to be able to read to understand what is said, but uh, mainly uh, to be able to express your thoughts correctly and effectively. Well, and in order to do that, it's not enough to know a lot of words. Uh, so I guess that, that I'm repeating this idea um, perhaps the, four, uh, the thousandth time. Uh, okay, at least definitely not the first, uh, this is not the first time I'm saying the same words. What can you do and what should you do actually? You should uh, turn on your imagination. That's for sure. You should turn on your imagination. Unless you do that, so the chance that you can, it's a fat chance that you can do that uh, finally. So I have prepared some um, questions for some reason, for some reason. So they, huh, where are they by the way? Uh, no, really, hold a second please. They must be here. Okay. So the first question is, describe your, here it is. So describe your pen, please. You know, I'm just picturing the situation. Uh, you're taking uh, an ask examination and uh, your examiner, your ask examiner asks you uh, this question uh, with a smile on his or her, or her face. Uh, hello, blah, 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 blah. And the, the first question is, could you describe me your pen, please? The pen you were holding in your hand, please. So uh, could you describe me your, oh, no, no, no. Oh, it's so foolish. Not describe, exactly, this is what, uh, this is. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I'm full sorry. Could you tell me, could you tell me something about your pen, about your pen? Yeah, so imagine again, mm, uh, so pretend that uh, you haven't heard me say anything before, okay? So uh, ask examiner, your ask examiner may ask you with a smile on their face, uh, oh, so could you tell me something about your pen, please? The one you're holding uh, in your hand. And uh, you are lost. And the first thing you're you likely to start doing is to describe the, uh, the pen. Uh, saying uh, something about its color, its shape perhaps, and what you use it for. You, these are obvious things and uh, it's as clear as the day that the examiner wants to hear something different, not the fact he can see or she can see um, him or herself. They want to hear Achtung, a story. They want to hear a very short story. Yeah, short but informative, short but captivating. And in this case, uh, you must be good at uh, thinking up something to attract the examiner's attention to your personality. That's for sure. And so uh, let's see how it can be done. But before that, I would like to give you an example of what you shouldn't do um, when dealing with a, a similar assignment. So, Mm, for example, what the examiners uh, don't want to hear is uh, the following. Oh, it's my pen and uh, it's very good. I often use it. As you see, its color is green. However, uh, I can uh, change the color. Uh, I can change the color because there are three options to choose from green, Okay, blue and uh, red. Well, 
and I use it for different purposes. When writing something, uh, when writing a text or a dictation or an essay, I use blue. If I want to correct my mistakes, of course, I use, I use uh, the red color. And when I want to underline something important, I can use the green color, the green option too. I like that color because it's a very good one. It's so primitive. It's so primitive in many aspects. And firstly, it's primitive in terms of contexts, contexts, because context, because the examiner can see that himself. But he wants uh, to hear some. He wants to see you. Um, uh coming up with something uh which uh didn't exist before okay i mean a story what i mean to say is is uh, one's ability to create a story on the spur of the moment on the spur of the moment means right now and right here so uh you should you should uh be able to play by uh by ear yeah it's another idiom with the same meaning right here and right now without having long time for consideration so, could you tell me something about my pen? Okay, so what can we say? Firstly, I want to say that uh, your question uh, seems to be strange, but if you want me to tell you something about my pen, I've got a, a really interesting, captivating story. And it is a true one. Uh, the thing is that uh, this pen is quite old. If I remember, if I remember right, rightly, my grandfather, uh, used to use it uh, when writing his reports when he was a student and that means that uh, the pen was produced in uh, the early 20s of the previous century as you see uh, <coughs> it's filled with ink and uh, in order to use it i always have to uh, shop around for ink and it's not that easy to do because these days it's a very uh, uncommon uh, to use ink when writing. Uh, another thing which is which makes my pen unusual is that uh, it is kind of talisman for me. Talisman for me. I have noticed that uh, whenever I write something important with this pen, uh, the outcome is always positive for me, uh, regardless of my involvement into um, into the work. Well, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that I always get uh, high marks, uh, great uh, uh, grades, I'm sorry for the tautology. But anyway, uh, everything, uh, the outcome is quite perfect for me. And uh, perhaps I believe that uh, it can be explained by the fact that my uh, grand, uh, grandfather uh, donated it to me uh, with uh, warmth and love, saying that it would help me and would serve me for a long time. And his words turned out to be true. Finally, I wanted to say that I would like to say that I'm planning to uh, present it to my grandparents, uh, and it should become our family tradition uh, because I'm pretty sure that this uh, this thing um, automatically automatically may become kind of a magical thing, um, bringing happiness and uh, good news uh, when used. So this is uh, um, something which I have just uh, thought up right now. Believe me, I haven't, I didn't write anything. Okay, okay. So the next question, for example, the next question. Oh, I should remember. So the first was about uh, pen someone your pen uh -huh. the second uh, question why do you think why do you think people often a dream of flying it's another unusual question and if you ask this question so it means that you're expected to come up with something um, as unusual as the question is well i don't want you to become uh fairy tale uh writers of course no 
but you should be able to be um, quite uh i would say enthusiastic and uh, um I, i'm trying to uh, to pick up the right word to describe what you the, the capability you should be able uh, you should possess uh you should be able to uh think faster okay so what do you think people often dream why do you think people often dream of flying well indeed um you are very likely uh, to hear a lot of people answer the same question that they would like to be able to fly uh regardless of the age and uh, a region and even in many uh fairy tales of different uh, uh, people's um uh main characters uh somehow try to um try to get to their destinations using some magical instruments like for example uh flying wrecks uh, or perhaps a pair of flying boots in order to uh, get to the destination faster well and um, it implies flying well even in fairy tales through fairy tales people express uh their desire uh to uh, to be able to fly and uh, will and nearly um uh, uh an effective uh, think tank may ask oh and why do people uh think so much about flying indeed and uh, i believe there are some uh reasons which may appear to be groundless but i believe they aren't i believe that what i mean to say is that people want to uh, to fly because they used to do that and they could do that automatically yes uh using some kind of mental techniques maybe i don't know uh i don't know and actually it doesn't matter but what i'm pretty sure about is that people our ancestors <coughs> a long time ago could do that and uh, uh for some reason we have lost this uh, capability of flying uh but the desire the great desire of the of um, this capability or of retaining this capability is still in our genes and uh, that uh coal which is in our blood uh, makes us uh makes us i mean by us i mean people and first of all scientists uh makes us um uh, uh and i would say uh get back the capability uh, for that reason uh we have invented uh, helicopters airplanes uh and all started from uh flying balloons right but still uh and uh, legends again legends about a caris and uh, didal so we we could we can and I hope that in the long run, we will be able to fly as effectively as our ancestors could. Okay, uh, that was my version for that question. And uh, the third question. Uh, so let me, uh, let me take a look. Uh, what, yeah, the, here is the question. What would, what would you do to, Fulfill your dream number one. It's a very important question. Um, yeah, it's a very important question, and uh, sooner or later, everybody asks themselves this question: uh, What are, you, are they ready? What are uh, they are ready to sacrifice to reach uh, their goals? And it, I wouldn't say their goal by a goal i mean goal number one the most important one and in this uh, in this context i would like to bring up three main questions which uh, we are supposed to answer uh to analyze uh, what we uh, can do and should do to fulfill our dream number one the first question is whether or not we have a clear understanding what our main goal is I'm saying that because uh, I haven't come across a lot of people uh, in my occupation around me who have a clear picture what they would like to, uh, what kind of uh, 
goal they have set. Most of them, the majority of uh, people in my occupation or around me, uh, live with, uh, without any goal. They live automatically, uh, scheduled uh, in a scheduled way. Um, so their lives uh, are gray. Again, the first thing we should be able to answer is what our main goal is. Another important question we're supposed to answer is to estimate our potential. And there can be different types of potential. First of all, persistence. In other words, um, how strong uh, spiritually uh, you are uh, to keep on working in order to reach the goal because uh, it's very uh, unlikely that you reach the goal immediately right now uh, with first attempt. Um, the boot is on the other foot. In most cases, uh, people have to work long hours or maybe long for a long time to, uh, to reach the goal, not to mention goal number one. The higher the goal, uh, the longer it takes uh, to reach it, right? Another uh, thing uh, which is worth our estimating is the financial side of the matter, because these days when everything is sky high, uh, we, uh, we are supposed to uh, think it over as well. Um, I just want to bring in the famous American uh, uh, expression, no money, no honey. So um, I wouldn't say that everything uh, is reached uh, through money, but money is uh, the means uh, enabling us to reach our goals. And uh, the more money uh, ones have, uh, ones has, uh, so the higher the chance that uh, one reaches uh, uh, the goal. And finally, we should also consider the time we've got. What I mean to say is that if uh, one's age is uh, quite uh, high, uh, so it's uh, less uh, likely. Uh, it's less likely that uh, one uh, stands a chance to reach uh, the goal. However, there are some exceptions, and uh, I put uh, the hat um, because such people, such people, are perhaps the most, uh, I would say, the strongest spiritually, right? Uh, despite of their, uh, despite, uh, despite their age, they struggled hard um, uh, to reach their goal. For example, uh, I know that in uh, Tajikistan, there is uh, an 85-year-old student uh, studying mathematics at the local university. Can you, can you beat it? Okay, as for me, as for me, I've, first of all, I should answer all these, I should analyze these uh, three uh, uh, important essential uh, questions. And finally, I should see uh, my perspectives. Um, to be more specific, I, I, say, I would say that I'm ready to sacrifice uh, a part of my private life, uh, a part of my incomes, and of course, uh, a, ma a major part of my uh, free time uh, to be ready to face the challenges which I'm supposed to cover in order to reach my dream number one. Thank you. So thank you very much for your attention, guys. Uh, this is the end of today's uh, class. Uh, if, I have, if I have made a mis uh, some mistakes, I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm pretty sure that I have made them. <laughs> okay, I'm not an angel. So uh, write down your answers. I mean, uh, I mean uh, the listening section. Also, I would like you to answer uh, the same three speaking questions. If you want to, if you want to uh, record the answers, uh, feel free. Uh, so contact me through the Telegram, and I will listen to your answers uh, with great pleasure, and uh, I will give you uh, my comments on the quality of your answers. Thank you very much. Goodbye.